you're so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. I haven't done a COVID video for a while, so here goes. In this one, I want to debunk definitively and with numbers the argument that COVID is only slightly worse than the flu. And this is an argument that was very popular back in 2020 um, before we had, you know, the massive second wave and third waves and the number of existing COVID deaths at the time was perhaps not hugely above what you would expect in a normal flu season. So it was common for the COVID skeptic community and the uh, anti-lockdown crowds to give this argument that in fact it wasn't really that much worse. And when you compare the mortality statistics, um, the mortality rates, sorry, between COVID and flu, um, that obviously told you that COVID was worse. But one of the things about COVID that I think has made it much deadlier is that it actually isn't as deadly. I think if we had had a disease that was that had a, a mortality rate of say 10% uh, or more, people would have would have just absolutely panicked from the very start. Um, it's the fact that COVID's mortality is lower than than some other coronaviruses like SARS and MERS that makes people complacent and it makes people wonder. Well, if it only has like a two percent mortality rate and it's mostly among old people, then should we resort to all these? measures to contain it well um, i hope with this video you're finally convinced that what we're dealing with is something way worse than the flu like way worse just how much worse well over 500 times as worse than the flu and let me start with the numbers and the reason that it was hard perhaps to debunk this argument back in 2020, is that we didn't have any coexisting flu season data to compare COVID with. So we had flu season data from previous years, but COVID really took off uh, from March and April of 2020, by which time the 2019-2020 flu season, at least the one in the Northern Hemisphere, had mostly faded away. So there was really no way to compare COVID data uh, with the same social distancing and lockdown measures, uh, how would how would the flu react uh, in a situation where we had these same measures? Because we don't really take measures on a normal year against the flu. Um, you know, we don't have social distancing. We at the most we have vaccines, and you know, older people are told to be a bit more precautious. But we don't really, as a society, prepare for the flu the way that we have for COVID. So the first Think a uh, reason that should have made you doubt this argument's validity was well, we're facing two completely different scenarios. We can't compare a traditional flu season where we have no measures against it versus a situation like COVID, a pandemic where we're actually taking bigger measures against the disease than we've ever taken in human history. So now that argument can be debunked because now we have a flu season. You know, we're in now in the summer of 2021 and the 2020 2021 flu season is over and we have data for it. And I'm going to use US data because the CDC has some very good uh, weekly numbers on uh, influenza cases and I'm going to show you. This is the the weekly report um, I'm going to put the link, all these links I'm going to put in the description in case you want to look at the data yourselves. Um, and you should always look at data yourselves. You should never just believe what a YouTuber or a, um, an op-ed writer writes. Uh, you know, don't, don't take that as face value. Uh, please question my work. So here is the weekly U.S. flu report produced by the CDC. And the chart that I want to show you is this one. So this is a chart of flu and uh, pneumonia and COVID deaths. And flu deaths are the yellow bits. And COVID deaths are the blue bits. And it doesn't take a PhD in statistics to realize that the blue bits are so much bigger than the yellow bits. Like, it's not even close. So um, just on that basis, it's clear that COVID is 
infinitely worse than flu in terms of the, the number of people who have died. And the red line is interesting, and, and this is why this chart, while illustrative, doesn't tell the whole story. And the red line is not just flu deaths, uh, it's also pneumonia deaths. And even when you add up all the pneumonia deaths, COVID is still hugely above these total deaths. And here's the reason why, for the uh, analysis that I'm about to make, the yellow numbers are not the ones that we should focus on because these are understated. So here's where I'm going to explain how these numbers are obtained. These are so-called coded deaths. So coded deaths are deaths that are registered by a physician after someone dies and based on a classification, which uh, I'm going to show you. This is the uh, ICD-10-CM. By the way, I, I only learned about this when making this video, so don't, don't think I'm an expert on uh, medical issues. Um, this is research done for this video, uh, but it's quite interesting, so I'm happy to share it with you. Um, so J09 to J18 are all those classifications from uh, influenza and pneumonia. And often people lump the two, and that is problematic. And I've seen a lot of people make this same argument uh, by using the numbers that lump flu and pneumonia. And there's a problem with that. The problem is that most pneumonia deaths are actually not caused by the flu um, because uh, there's various types of pneumonia. There is viral pneumonia, which is usually the one that's caused by the flu. And there's bacterial pneumonia, which is usually not caused by the flu. And bacterial pneumonia is actually much more deadly than viral pneumonia. And uh, I should know personally, because my mother almost died from it uh, a couple of years ago. And bacterial pneumonia is, is fulminating. Like, she was fine in the morning. And then by the time she went to the hospital later that day, uh, her lung capacity was something like 20%. So that's how insanely quick it kills you. Um, so most of the people who die of pneumonia will die from bacterial pneumonia, which is much, much more deadly. So it's incorrect to just lump the two when you compare them. And bacterial pneumonia um, isn't, you know, the, the, the way that it's transmitted is not necessarily the same as flu. So um, that's important to note. So we can't really use the uh, pneumonia statistics. But then that leaves another problem. And the problem is, well, um, because infl flu kills a lot of old people and because um, not everyone who dies of the flu will end up in a hospital, is this really the accurate number of how many people die from influenza? And the CDC admits that it's not. So every year, the CDC does an estimate it uses a, a very complicated mathematical model to, uh, and, and here's the, the page that explains what they do. Um, and I'm going to just read a bit from it. Um, because not all deaths related to influenza occur in the hospital, we use death certificate data to estimate how likely deaths are to occur outside the hospital. We look at death certificates that have pneumonia or influenza causes, other respiratory and circulatory disease uh, causes, or, or other non-respiratory, non-circulatory causes of death because deaths related to influenza may not have influenza listed as a cause of death. So we cannot use the coded deaths uh, as a reliable estimate of how many people died of the flu because clearly there's people who die outside of hospitals who might not have had that coded uh, flu uh, reference by whoever uh, certified their deaths. So. Every year, the CDC produces an estimate of how many people actually die. And here's an estimate of the 2019-2020 season, which was the last one before COVID. The CDC estimated that 21,909 people in the U.S. died of the flu. And this compares with the number of coded deaths, which uh, th there's a link on the original, uh, the first site, the first page that I showed you, and I've done the numbers. And um, for that same year, there were 9,248 co coded deaths. So the actual number of flu deaths was uh, over twice as many. And in fact, in, uh, so I've done these calculations for previous years, and in fact, that was a low, uh, a low difference. In, in a lot of years, 
the difference between the coded debts and the uh, CDC estimated debts are is quite big. It's uh, in some years it's been uh, around eight times, seven eight times. So yeah, it's a it's a big difference. Now, why is this relevant? Well, I made a chart, and what I did was I basically um, took the deaths, the, the, the CDC estimated deaths of previous years and compared with how many people actually died of COVID during the current flu season, well, the recently uh, ended flu season. And the numbers are absolutely shocking. So this is a chart, the chart. Um, the dark blue bits are the coded deaths which are available from the National Center of Health Statistics. The blue bits are the uh, the difference between those and the uh, the CDC estimate. So this number is the CDC estimate of death. So that's see that's the 21,909 that I mentioned a bit earlier. And this is the number of COVID deaths that occurred during the 2020-2021 flu season. 380,225 people died of COVID. Um, and the CDC usually uses uh, the 40th week of the year. That's when the flu season starts for their statistics and ends in the 20th week of the following year. So I'm using that consistently to get these numbers. Um, and actually, the it varies. Uh, d during certain years, the the flu season really starts earlier, sometimes ends later or ends before that. Um, but I, I want to give just consistent numbers. So these are calculated on the basis of week 40 uh, to week 20 of the next year. So we had in the 2020-21 flu season, we had 380,225 COVID deaths. In contrast, we had only 699 coded uh, flu deaths. So that is the lowest number that we've had uh, in recent memory. That's insane. That's insane. That's uh, how social distancing, lockdowns, all the measures that we've done to contain COVID have uh, brought down the flu. And despite these measures, we still had this other respiratory disease kill 380,000 people during the same time. That's how bad COVID is. Okay. Now, when people compare with the flu and they're using previous years, uh, previous years when we didn't have any kind of restrictions or any kind of uh, coping mechanisms, um, at best, so this is the worst flu season in uh, these recent years, 2017-18, when there were 61,099 deaths, uh, according to the CDC estimate, that was still 6.2 times higher. So compared to like a normal year without measures, that was uh, 6.2 times. And it was 24.7 times the, uh, the coded deaths. Now, the difference between the coded deaths in 2020-21 was 544 times. Not 544%, 544 times. That's how... How, how many more COVID coded deaths we had in this flu season than coded flu deaths? That's fucking insane. Now, the reason that I explain to you this difference between the coded deaths and the estimates is because obviously this is the low uh, bar, right? So we, we have to assume that there were more flu deaths um, than 699. Right, the people who died of flu that couldn't go to the hospital, etc. The problem is we don't know yet, because these these mathematical estimates that the CDC does are usually produced uh, often a year or more later, um, and they com they get consistently revised, etc. So we don't know. We don't have a figure. The CDC has not yet produced an estimate of how many flu deaths there were uh, in 2020-2021. So. Uh, and we actually, we might never know. The reason we might never know is because these models, uh, and I, 
as someone who has a degree in economics and knows a, a thing or two about statistics, uh, if these, if you have a year that is such an anomaly in terms of the variables that you're using to construct this model, then that model might be completely worthless. So we might never have an accurate estimate uh, of how many flu deaths there were in 2020-21. Um, or maybe they'll have to, some other researchers will have to make uh, a different model to estimate. But uh, the model that basically uses is used to estimate these previous years might not work for this year. So I'm still going to be generous. And I'm going to take the, the worst year in terms of the difference between the coded deaths and the uh, estimate, which was uh, 2015. As you can see, the the number of coded deaths was really low, and the difference with the, the total deaths was the highest of any of these other years. So I'm going to use that year. I'm generous. I want to I want to help the uh, the COVID skeptics and the anti lockdown people. Uh, I want to help them. I want to not humiliate them as bad as they already have been humiliated by reality. So using the difference between coded deaths and estimated deaths of this year. Um, I have calculated that uh, there was about 4,162 flu deaths uh, in this past flu season. And so the difference is still 91.4 times. <laughs> so, yeah, not 91.4%, 91.4 times. That's the absolute best case estimate, okay? Uh, it, it will probably be higher than this. So that is the most generous number that I can give to these people. So looking at these numbers, can you tell me with a straight face that COVID is uh, just slightly worse than the flu, just a, a nasty flu? No, it is enormously worse than the flu. Absolutely enormously. And the reason, again, is not because of how much more deadly it is than the flu. It's because it's so much more transmissible than the flu. That's the reason why it's more deadly, um, because more people catch it than they catch the flu. And consequently, even though its mortality rate is not as high as other horrible diseases of the past, you know, uh, or other coronaviruses like SARS, which is something like 10%, or MERS, which kills one out of three people, uh, to say nothing of previous pandemics like the Spanish flu, uh, which I think the estimate is something like 5%. Uh, or back in the day, you know, the Black Plague, etc. So by the standards of those diseases, COVID is quite mild in terms of the, the, num the, the mortality rate uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. But COVID is so much more transmissible than any of, of these other diseases. Um, I don't think we've had a pandemic with a virus that is as transmissible as COVID. And if you look at the uh, the way that the... the the newer variants are emerging. It, it becomes even more transmissible. That's why the newer variants are more are more dangerous. It's not because they're that much more deadly. It's that they're just easier to transmit. So, you more people catch it, more people will die. That's just basic math. Okay, you know, same disease, same mortality rate. Uh, twice as many people catch the the second disease. Uh, twice as many people are going to die from it. That's the simple logic. That is why COVID is so, so much more deadly. Why we cannot just afford to not cope with it the way that we, we do with the flu on a normal year. Because if not, like, just imagine the size of this number, the size of this red bar. If we had had no social distancing, no other measures, no lockdowns, no nothing. Just imagine just the, the number. Uh, it would be insanely high. It would. I, I don't even want to think just how high it would be. So that's why we have to take it seriously, like very damn seriously. And I say this in the in the context of some rather unfortunate statements by the new uh, British Health Secretary uh, Sajid Javid, who apparently is uh, even worse than his predecessors. The Tories somehow have a, a, a magic formula of always picking the most incompetent and morally bankrupt people uh, for their cabinet positions. And then when they do something that gets them fired or when they quit, they replace them with someone even worse than the previous one. And he wrote a, an op-ed in the Mail on Sunday, um, 
one of Britain's sleaziest tabloids, which uh, really makes you wonder who this Tory government is really appealing to. Uh, and he made a quote, like, I, we're going to have to learn to accept COVID and find ways to cope with it just as we do with the flu. This is so irresponsible because we don't cope with the flu. We just let it do its thing. <laughs> and we can't afford to do that with COVID because it's that much worse than the flu. And I'm not saying that we have to be in lockdown forever. Um, I, I agree that most... Uh, most lockdown restrictions and social distancing restrictions should end uh, soon. The the date of June of July nineteenth, as uh, currently established. Um, but I do think we still need to have like some measures. Like we should still wear masks on public transport. You know, even if we have restaurants open, nightclubs open, let's still we need to still restrict um, the the potential ways in which this disease can can transmit itself. Uh, so, yeah, you know, no one wants lockdowns forever. Um, we cannot shut down um, the hospitality sector forever. We we can't do this. This is obvious. But we still we we can't just assume that this is over and that there is uh, no risk whatsoever to just uh, forget any kind of of measure. And it's a signal. It's uh, you know, there's going to be responsible people who will wear, you know will still be wearing face masks on public transport, etc. Um, I certainly will, regardless of, of whether I'm vaccinated or not. Um, but not everyone is going to do that. And the, the signaling that the government gives is very important for people to follow the rules. So um, it's really unfortunate. And um, I, you know, the risks are huge, the risks that even people who uh, might not develop the disease are still incubating it if they're spreading it. And that just raises the risk of, of more transmissible variants, uh, variants that might eventually um, be able to fool the vaccines. And we don't want a repeat of uh, March and April 2020 again. You know, we don't want another six months waiting for a vaccine to work or, or 12 months. Um, so I'm going to put this uh, chart on my uh, Twitter account with some uh, explaining and some links so please uh, do check it out please share it especially with your COVID skeptic anti-lockdown friends who uh, well they're not big fans of data and facts to begin with but I hope this one might possibly convince one or two people uh, to understand just how much worse this disease was relative to the flu. Um, how, despite the fact that all these measures that we did that uh, worked equally to contain something like the flu, because they're both transmitted the same way, and still managed to reduce flu deaths to uh, an absolute minimum, still couldn't prevent 380,000 people from dying. So just imagine how big this number would be on any other year. Um, it's not comparable at all in any way and hopefully charts like these will help people realize the the magnitude and uh, if they have children uh, here's another good one um, some numbers on pediatric flu deaths in there was just one in the entire united states during the current flu season compared to almost 200 in 2019 um, you know this says something you you have to see this and conclude something uh, about the way that we've managed uh, so there you go I hope uh, again I hope this convinces at least someone and I hope people behave responsibly even when restrictions are lifted uh, because we, we all need to play our... If the government isn't doing it, people need to play their part. Um, so please, please, at least on public transport, at least in, in areas where, where you might um, put other people at risk, uh, behave responsibly. So thanks for watching this video. Please like, please share. Most importantly, please subscribe for this channel for more exciting content. And see you next time.